What's going on guys? Welcome to another Wednesday update video. We've got recruiting for Midland, McAllen, and the Skeeters who actually pulled off a, an upset last week, so to speak. But they had a good game. They had a good game. So we'll check out their recruiting board. Let's go right into Midland here and check them out. Okay, so as you can see, Matt McDaniel has locked us out. There's going to be a lot of lockouts here because we're a little bit later on in the season now so guys are like really narrowing down their search yep mike evans the five-star running back definitely looking at the mustangs daryl jackson adam mcdonald pretty good player there jack taylor cornerback will act us out kyle wagner so the running game is really attracting some of these players we're gonna go harder on dukes maybe force your hand a little bit buddy <laughs> quan quan alexander i don't know I think, he, I think he's going to OSU, everybody. But Quan we'll Quan likes all of our teams, so that's a good thing. Yep, Matt Davis, middle linebacker. That would be a good pickup there. We're in a dogfight here with uh, <laughs> a prairie dogfight with Kendall Smith. So hopefully, I'm hoping we can end up getting him, but we'll see there. Kinley Harris, Adam Davis, another middle linebacker. Bell might blossom into a good offensive tackle. We'll have to see about that. And then some of the guys down at the bottom, Boyd Scales. Antonio Mendoza really looking at the Wranglers. Robert Miller, we're in first place. So this is shaping up to be an okay class. Not um, the best. Yeah, Midland spent all their coaching upgrades on in-game play. We figured the kind of the all the extra things with Midland would kind of push them in recruiting so that we didn't have to hit recruiting, but they're still having a decent class. Overall. Yeah, and I honestly I think some of the the coaching upgrades for in-game management helped them win that game against ACU, so it's very possible. All right, now we are moving on to the McAllen Matadors. They're coming in uh, off of a loss and they got a big game against ACU. Yeah, this week and they're in a lot of recruiting battles with the Mustangs as you guys may have seen. So let's get into it. Ooh, nice. Okay, so this is good. This is good. We're right in the mix for Gunner Rivers. It looked like he was really going hard at Texas, and then we've kind of made a late push. Everybody has. Yep, and Gunner Rivers, you can see here that lockoff point is pretty much going to close some of those teams out, but Amarillo, McAllen, Little Rock, and Ardmore are all in the mix. We got some visits coming up. Ardmore went up big. Look at the plus 1,000 change. You might not be able to schedule a visit. Uh oh, that's gonna be a problem for the Matadors. Yeah, yeah, but good, Ew, good for Ardmore. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Ooh. They're gonna get. They're looking at Matt McDaniel, Seth Howard, Chris Cook. Again, Mike Evans is up there. It's Rory Stronghead. We are in the lead. Daryl Jackson, also in that mix. So again, they're fighting with Midland quite a bit. This was disappointing. I thought, I thought Odessa or McAllen was gonna end up getting Vince Hunter. From Idaho, we lose him to Louisville, so he's off the board. Dwayne Austin, look at all these 70s, though. This is good for them. Yeah, but they're, I mean, they need to start closing some gaps on these guys. Yeah, I mean, a lot of Midland. You see all those Midland battles. Andres Buckley, we're taking over the lead there. Camden Tucker, we're really trying. We're really giving this a go, folks, but this is yeah. going to be hard. Somebody was commenting about, about Camden Tucker, was looking for him, but... Yeah, I mean, they he's cut off the Skeeters, he's cut off Ardmore, ACU. The only last hope is McAllen. Yeah, so hopefully we can right that ship maybe at the end of the year if it goes that far. Some of these guys at the bottom, again, they just want to go on McAllen. And we're putting a few points on them just to round out that recruiting class. All right, let's go into the upset of the week last week. Skeeters recruiting board. So pretty interesting here. A guy named Andrew Harris wants to keep his visit going, but he's locked us out, and we can't unlock him because we didn't make the cut. So he's still going to come on, and <laughs> he's still going to get the score of 500, 500 plus points, but I don't think there's any bonuses no matter what they do. There's not going to be any bonuses for him visiting. Hmm. Which is interesting. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what that situation really is. But let's uh, sort it by overall here and see how the Skeeters are doing. 
with their Ooh. rest of the board here. So Travis Jackson looks like he's gonna he's gonna start leaning towards the Skeeters here. Only down 560 points to Navy, so hopefully we can nab him. Dennis Newsom, good offensive, or not offensive, but outside linebacker Corey Young, nice tackle prospect. Probably should put some more points on him rather than Nate Galveston, but you know we really want to go after getting a quarterback here for the Skeeters. Since... Yeah, what, what was the difference on Galveston's stuff? Oh, like right here, there was a change I think right there. Yeah, so Amarillo took over the lead. He was really heavy on Odessa, but. I don't know. Dust is on that on that losing tear, so maybe they are seeding some ground here. And then actually, he's actually yeah, he moved down six points. Yeah. So he's 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 labeled as a bust, but I mean that's probably because of the throw power, the throw accuracy, an eighty nine throw power, sixty nine. Yeah. So he's definitely a short range. A poor man's short range Drew Brees. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. El Latter day Drew Brees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Might be a little too specific. Well, it's, I mean, it's, I think he could be a Drew Brees type. Not too bad, because, I mean, he's got some speed. He had 81 speed, so he's looking like right. he's going to be a good player for the Skeeters and what they want to do as long as Wingo is still there. We got Luke Kleck. We tried, man. We tried, Jack, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen here. He locked the skeeters out as well you know what the good news is though like going deeper in, into a dynasty we can recap where all these guys have went and we'll, we'll cross paths with them later yeah. so we, we can still keep track of some of the players if we you know if west virginia ever pops up in our series like yeah we'll see cleck right play for the linebacker for west virginia so right eventually ray for vincent will be a starting safety for penn state <laughs> so yep guys that have dropped off so I'm just going through the rest of. I like this class for the board, Skeeters. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're going to get better. You can't really ask for too much more at this point. Maybe if they keep on this winning streak, you know, their prestige will go up in the off season. They'll attract higher caliber recruits. But overall, this is not a very bad class if they can seal the deal on some of the guys at the top of this board. All right, here are the Prairie Dogs, and what are they working on here? Ooh. Not sure what you what you got what you got planned here. This is little, good for me because I get to see what you're working on. Yeah, a little misdirection. Unlike you, you're probably getting resting on your laurels, not taking us very seriously. Oh, is that what it is? Is that what it is? Yeah, that's because you're trying to get me off balance here, trying to make some missed tackles, a lot of this kind of stuff, get that extra yard. You're looking for big plays based on misdirection. Oh yeah, and we're definitely thinking that we want to grind the clock down against you. I, and I said this last week, like we're interested in surviving. We just want to survive. Oh boy. That's not going to work. We just want to get the game into the second half. And if we do that, I'm not going to say I like our chances, but... It's better than the alternative. You got to play keep away football, and the best way to do that is, like you said, run the clock out. Try not to give up the big play. We're for oh, Ardmore. Patrick. We're gonna have to make explosive plays to counter. You're killing the clock. All right, let's check out Ardmore. By the way. All right, here we are. Ardmore practice. And honestly, against your defense, I'm looking for some bigger plays. This is actually a nickel formation with a blitz, two blitzing linebackers there. Everybody else is in zone, which I think you like to bring a lot of blitzes is from what I've gained out of your gameplay here. So I think the, the big thing for us is to be able to hit these little underneath routes. And then if something does get open downfield, get it out quick, fire it deep. Make a play. Boom, like that. That's what we yeah. got to do. I will say you have an advantage because uh, if you want to talk about watching footage, uh, you've basically gone through every single one of my plays. Whether it makes the cut or not, you basically <laughs> watch what happens. So it's yeah. like, you know, I can't say I do that all the time with the Thunderwolf, so eh, I'm not looking forward to this. And here we just got some man coverage here. Tight formation. Looks like we're going to run. So, of course, you're going to try to call some blitzes. And you might think that 
We're running the football, trying to stop the run, but we've got some short little passes here to try to make completions. And nope, I can't do that against you because you love to take control over people and just, get those passes Just throw to off. Jenkins. Right here, boom. Oh, gosh! I dare you to say Jenkins five times. Yeah, you don't like when I say that. Say it. Jenkins. 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 It's Jenkins. Jenkins. No, it's look at look how it's spelled. J E N. It's Jen. Jen. How do you say Jennifer? Jennifer. 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 Jenkins. Jen. Jen. Jenkins. 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 What is it, guys? Can you enunciate it for everybody? I'm pretty sure it's Jenkins. <laughs> Jenkins. <laughs> I don't know though. I maybe I'm wrong, everybody. You're you're probably wrong. You're wrong. You're so wrong. Oh god, I can't do that either. Alright, so the top 25 here. We have Ohio State, Florida State, Washington, Texas A&M, Alabama, Miami, Clemson, Stanford. So we got North Carolina here sitting at 6-0. Ardmore is sitting at 5-0, so congratulations yeah. is in order to you. I thought they were an 88 overall, they're a 91. Yep. Alright. So we still got some work to do, trying to catch up to these 1-2 and two loss teams. I'd say maybe a little bit of bias is in the polls here. So how about others receiving votes? What do we got? Nobody. Nobody. That's sad. All right, let's check out the Heisman. And yet again, Jamil Schmidt is climbing up the boards here with another great performance. 198 yards in a touchdown in that big win. Darnold didn't do too much to impress. Jordan Brown taking a hit. Gaskin and Kerryon Johnson climbing. All right, so for week seven, we got players of the week. Tyler Holgerson, two interceptions against the Prairie Dogs, a sack, and two tackles for losses. I usually, don't, I usually don't care about other players in the NCAA, but that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. From J.J. Green. 243 with four scores. Holy crap. And then no surprise uh. there. Yeah, Rhett Bollinger, 391. Four scores, like eight incompletions. That's I'm, I'm responsible for that, everybody. Good job, Rep Bollinger. Wow. All right, adding on to the injury report is Miguel Machado. We saw him against Broken Arrow. Had a pretty good game, but he is hurt. Only one for one week. week, and it's the only new injury that's shown up for week number eight. Yep. How about let's check uh, Nebraska and Odessa before the big game. And we got nobody. We're healthy. Willis turns out he's okay. He's going to make it for this game. Ardmore, again, clean bill of health. So that's positive. ACU also. Nobody's hurt. Yeah, so everybody's healthy. Everything's looking good for basically the, probably the more popular teams. <laughs> All right, so something new here, guys. I just want to go over this like really, really quick. Not spend a whole lot of time on it. Just some stats updates. It's halfway through the year pretty much. I'm just looking at Kay Wilson. Nice numbers there. 1162, 12 touchdowns, and two INTs. So good stuff there. Shook has 17 carries this season. I know. He needs more. He needs to be... I mean, Kay Wilson's got more rushing attempts than De De DeQuandre Shook. I know. And Shook has higher yards per carry than Wimberley, but small sample size, maybe? Who knows? Right, and just, let's look at wide receivers. Hardaway... Yeah. And Jenkins Jeez. had four touchdowns. D.D. Foreman with three. Pretty even distribution, I'd say. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we'd like to spread it around a lot. And just looking at some defensive stats here. Vinny Hill Parrish, 77 overall, and he's just, like, killing it. Five sacks there. Uh, McKinley with two. And then Harlan McCorders. You know, he's pretty mm. solid himself. So, so you like those quarterback blitzes. Yeah, they can get in on it. All right, and no surprise here. Here's Bishop, over a thousand more yards than Cade Wilson. So I mean, this is obvious. They just love to throw. That's obvious in there too, with five picks, 363 yards per game. Noah Jones leading the way with rushing with five scores. So they still don't like to run a whole lot, but that's changing. Receiving, look at these <laughs> receptions. This is insane. Like 42 I'm... catches for Mitchell. I'm surprised. He doesn't have more, honestly. Yeah, especially in the end zone, too. And like Manuel it. does a lot of the damage uh, for the touchdowns, but Johnson is like the red zone guy. Yep, which is weird because 6'4", he's a speed guy, and Manuel's like 
the big guy, 6'9". Right. Yeah. All right, just checking out some defensive stats here. Look at all these tackles for losses. Yep, Armandaris has six sacks, two and a half for Greer. Leading tackle is Washington. And, you know, a lot of these... A lot of these guys are pitching in. I'd like to see Todd Parker do a little bit more, though. I know. As a starting defensive tackle, I, th I think he needs a little more action. I think it's just he's like an Adamican Sue type of thing. You yeah. know, he, he's yeah. just eating up blocks, and that's about all he's doing. All right, so we're just going to stick to offensive stats for everybody else. For you, though, I think we'll go offense and defense. But, okay, so just moving on here. Russell Springer, that's not a good ratio there, 12 and 8. Nope. Rayshon Beckham, 305 and 2, so they're still trying to search for that running game. And then Terrell Moore having a pretty solid season, but the receptions, guys, you know, this is an early, it's because of the early weeks they weren't doing much. Yeah. All right, Drew Snyder has 11, 52, 8 touchdowns, uh. 7 picks, and we've seen all those fumbles, so he really needs to take care of the ball better. Let's look at the rushing game here. Tremaine Chapman. That's nice. Good year on the ground so far, 3 touchdowns. And. Receiving, you got Rowe with 32 catches. Pretty good. Harden's got three touchdowns. So interesting distribution of the ball there. I think Cassidy Morris. We highlighted him in the little preview, and he hasn't really done much. He is like their third receiver. But... All right, Dequinan Timmons. It's only 7.59. No turnovers, though, throwing the ball. So, very efficient. I mean, it's it's lean. The passing game is lean but efficient. And now we have Jaleel Schmidt with 846 and 8 touchdowns. Folks, that's pretty good. Timmons has 622 rushing with 5. Jarquez Holly, the touchdown vulture, with 5 touchdowns. Yeah, 5 Honestly. of those should be Schmidt's. <laughs> Maybe not all of them, but some of them. He should at least be in double digits. Yeah, I agree. But look at Timmons right now. 97 attempts. Yep. So the passing game, I mean, you know, like I said, lean but efficient. And McCullough right now is the leading wide receiver. So that's all there is to say about that. All right, check out Camu. We've got Noah Shepard, three touchdowns, two interceptions. It's just what he does. It's not going to throw a whole lot. Go to the rushing. Chris Golston, 496. Between him and Fritz, it's pretty split right down the middle. Yep. They're both as effective as each other, but Fritz with that 78-yard rush against Cal. That'll help the yards per carry. Yep. Let's go to the receiving. Again, guys, just nothing here to really show. Matt Moreau's he's the only guy making catches out there. Yeah. Kind of funny because we also highlighted M.A.S. Polk inside that, uh, inside that video, and he's not really doing anything either. All right, let's go to... Little Rock and Rhett Bollinger having a pretty solid <laughs> season right now. I mean, look at a 75% completion yep. percentage and Carter Ashy. I mean, you can't do this. Nope. I mean, he was bad. He was real bad. Especially when Father Time is not on your side. You can't play like that. Maven with 88 carries. Not too many yards, though. Four yards per carry. He's got the five touchdowns, though, which is nice. Let's look at the wide receivers. Uh, look at Cobb has yeah. vaulted up the board with ever since Bollinger took over. And yep. he's a senior, so he, interesting dynamic there. Yeah, he's got a little connection going with him. Huff the tight end, and then Billings. I'd like to see Billings get involved a little more because he's their best receiver outside of Shamar McFadden, too. All right, Jed Carmichael, 1879. Eight <sighs> touch, 18 touchdowns with the six INTs. Dirty. Maybe needs to clean up the picks a little bit. But we might be nitpicking. So Malloy, pretty good game. Pretty good numbers on the ground here. Seven touchdowns. Got to like that. And if you see the receiving numbers, I mean, Carson Jackson. That's insane. Look this at the, is also a low-key Heisman campaign. Look at going that. On. 21 per reception? Yeah, yeah. He's absolutely huge. He's got eight touchdowns receiving. Can is, someone say Randy Moss? Uh, pretty good. All right, CJ Wicks. 13.50, 14 scores with three picks. Got to like what CJ Wicks is doing right now. I mean, they're coming off that loss, though. That was tough. But uh, Kinnery and Keller, I mean, it's kind of the dynamic duo on the ground. They've got uh, about 1,000 yards rushing and seven touchdowns here at the halfway point. Jared Harper, 
five scores. Irons with fewer receptions, but he's got the five touchdowns. So Devin Irons is a good red zone target for CJ Wicks. All right, and so for Nebraska State, we'll also show the defensive stats as well. Yep, and Willis, you see here, I mean, uh, he's got more picks than touchdowns. That's interesting. I yep. would not have thought that. I yep. thought you would have been more efficient than that from our, from our gameplay. I thought, I did not, there's no way I would have guessed that. He Yeah, he did make some mistakes, especially against Little Rock. And uh, had some turnovers against Bowling Green as well. So Monson, so far, the more effective running back between him and Pritchett. Willis, though, getting in there a little bit. And then, yeah, uh, like, you know, we're pretty balanced throwing the ball. Like, we will mix it up. Especially Highshaw, the tight end, with the second most receptions. James Monson with has 11 catches, although hasn't really gone for very far. But as you can see, the touchdowns, look how spread out that is. I know. That's, that's it's wild. just, it's who, literally whoever's open, that's yep. who we're going to. And, uh, yeah, let's check out the defense here. I want to see Shonka sacks. Uh, he's only got two. Tackles for losses, though. I think that leads the team. Yep. Yep, it does. So, we, yeah, yeah, we just we need more plays on defense. We really do. All right, Montana Flynn has 16.50 with 12 touchdowns and six picks. And you can see their craft was getting involved in the early going. Not very efficient, though. Sweeney has 39 carries for 255. He's got the two touchdowns. Out carried by Montana Flynn, although that does include sacks and... Uh, quarterback scrambles four touchdowns for Rivera he is the leading receiver in yardage but Skinner and Sweeney lead in receptions Khalid Livingston with four touchdowns as well all right and last but not least the Shreveport Skeeters 787 for Nate LaDuca like they just aren't throwing the ball because look at that that's what he does as a junior pocket passer who really can't move five picks like he just doesn't really take care of the football enough so they rely on Andre Wingo, 108 attempts already, 629, seven scores. So they really rely on him in the end zone or the uh, red zone at the Se goal line. 17 yards is his longest run. Yeah, that's pretty. Because yeah. he's a power back, you know, that's what he does. Yep. Then we got uh, Roberto Allen, the backup, with three scores and still, yet again, longest run, 10. Passing wise or receiving wise, they like to go to Herschel Gates. That, that just sounds like a, an end zone target <laughs> probably because of antonio gates but it's still the same Don Terrio groves leading the team only 19 catches so they're just not throwing it enough all right so our week eight matchups what here's our previews what you got hmm. herb street's going with me of course he is can't say i'm too surprised passing numbers are still up there for me but and you know that's the one area where we could probably hit you yeah, but I don't trust our defense against your offense. I mean, I, I think you guys are going to be open all day. I think you're just going to be able to move the ball at will, and I don't think I'll have an answer. I, I think I'll I might get three touchdowns. It's gonna be but. it's gonna be close because, like we said in the practice video, you're still going to want to run the football and kill that clock. I think the game's going to be closer than people might expect. It is you versus me. I don't know. Tell us who you think's going to win. But more importantly, who you want to win. Oh, okay. Oh. So there's a little twist now. We didn't do that in the other dynasties. We just said, who, who do you think? Now it's, who do you think, who do you want? Interesting. Yeah, well, I, you know, they should be cheering for you, though. Why? Because I, they, you know, got to knock me down. Hey, man, pegs. Sometimes, sometimes people want to see the, like, the guy whose channel it really is not to win. <laughs> <laughs> I right? don't know. Well, right. that's what they and sometimes they, they don't want the older brother to win all the time. Oh yeah, right. I don't like older brothers. Uh, of course not. Right. It's no, but they, backyard baseball type of games. Yeah. I think you'd have the advantage uh, on the field, obviously, but we'll see what happens. I'm. I think I'm gonna lose pretty easily, but uh, you know, going three and zero over the last three, the two of them were very close. I think my luck's gonna run out. I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to do it. But we'll see. All right. Now we have McAllen and ACU here. What do you think about this game? This game's actually gonna be closer than people think too. I'm not gonna lie to you. The fact that ACU couldn't stop Midland, how are they gonna stop McAllen? Are they gonna be able to get the defense to get 
figured out here. They did against Amarillo, but that's not saying much because that team was working on offensive things. Uh, even after the Texas Tech game, that was the first week they implemented the new playbook. Now they went into ACU game trying to still work on the playbook. It was an obvious loss that was waiting to happen for them, but now you get a team that's like firing on all cylinders like McAllen, that's going to be tough for them. Look at the total offense. Yeah, Even Pass. coming off a loss, I mean, that was a well-fought game. Could have easily gone the other way, and if it did, one little break here. Carmichael doesn't throw the pick six in the fourth quarter there. And now McAllen's 5-0, and they look like a national title contender. Okay, so you can't get caught up all the time in wins and losses. Like, you got to look at the product on the field. I think it has an effect psychologically, but... It's the same team that took Denver down to the wire. Could have easily gotten the W. I don't really hold that loss against them, so I think it's close. I think very think good it, game too. Who, so who are you gonna pick? Uh, I'm gonna go McAllen. Wow, I, I, think, I knew you. ACU is gonna go oh, uh, one and two. So. I think ACU is gonna win. Okay, but it's mostly because Bishop is not turnover happy. Okay. We already compared Jed Carmichael like Brett Favre yeah. because he's he like we saw in the simulation with Denver Tech, he doesn't have any loft on any of his throws. Yeah. He just can't do it. Like he's literally just bullet passing everything. So if he keeps doing that to ACU, Bill Stevens, Chris Evans, those Chandler. corners, yeah, those Cedric Granger, those defensive backs are gonna have a field day with Jed Carmichael. But obviously a big pro Pro Day game for, for both quarterbacks. Scots. Yep. Yep. All right, let's go to Odessa and Amarillo. So Herb Street's taking Odessa. I'm actually, hmm. I, I keep dogging Odessa, <laughs> but I think my guys are going to win here. Uh, I think yeah. Amarillo is going to take care of business. I think they're a much more balanced team. I mean, obviously, Odessa with their defense, probably going to be their undoing, I, I think. But, I mean, look at that turnover differential. That's yeah. kind of how Odessa's surviving a little bit. Yep. Even with the weak defensive numbers and the uh, and 37th in total offense is okay, but when you're throwing the ball the entire time and you're not running it, it's like, yeah, your yards per game is going to be a little bit higher overall. Right. You can see, so, but look at the differential. You should, you want your points per game and your total offense ranking to be kind of close. Yeah. And you see they're not cashing in the way that they need to. They can move the ball a little bit, but they can't quite get in the end zone or they got to settle for field goals or whatever and then uh interesting little tidbit there yeah. nice nice little deep dive and stat amarillo is the opposite because they score more than their total offense would suggest even with the turnover differential in the minus right so, so those are good signs maybe better signs, better signs. yeah so an interesting game here I'd, i'm gonna go amarillo though i'll go amarillo as well little rock in shreveport this is a pretty interesting game too I'm not gonna lie to you, because there's so much, there's so many storylines surrounding these two teams. Yeah, this game, this just gotta go down on the wire. I mean, the Skeeters with the number ten defense in the country. Even though Bollinger looks like he might have helped this team turn a corner, how can you, how can you take issue with the way Shreveport's played defense I recently? I can't. I can't, and it's surprising because their defense is, I would probably say it's worse than. Odessa. Nah. I, I, yeah. I mean, it's, no. it's not a shallow. Talent-wise, it's probably worse. But the fact that they're number 10 is crazy to me. So it literally must be coaching and game plan mm. from LaDuca. Yep. The head coach, LaDuca. I'm going to go with Little Rock, though. Because the way that they thrashed Nebraska State, Shreveport's on the similar playing field talent-wise as Nebraska State. And Bollinger has got these guys fired up. They lost that game, but I still go back to Bollinger's call on that fourth and one against, I um, can't remember who they played, Denver. against Denver Tex. But he's got the guys like believing in him, like, hey, let's go. Let's score right here. Yeah, so I think they're fired you, can, off. you can hit Little Rock on the ground, though, and Wingo might condense the game enough to the point where he takes it. So. That could be it. Who do you got? Uh, I'll take I'll take <laughs> Little Rock reluctantly. I think the luck's going to run out for the Skeeters. Okay. You know who I got. I got Little Rock. Yep. Right. Okay, now that we talked about this game being do or die. Kansas a and Midland. Loser gets two losses in the West Division, so that is a problem. Moving forward, 
Both offenses are playing very well. Kansas A&M has got that great turn. Uh, both teams, great turnover differential. But look at Midland's rush defense. That's pretty good. Yeah, a guy not getting a lot of credit is Centavius Stokes King, the big man up in the middle. We already talked about Todd Parker being like a Nadamik and Sue, but yeah, Stokes King, he's huge. Takes up a lot of room. Could be the guy that disrupts Kansas A&M's offense if he gets enough push. I mean, you got to double team him. Right. So, and the other thing here, look at Camus' pass defense is elite. Right. <laughs> And you're going up again, and both, although Midland is very balanced, uh, they are trying to throw the ball a bit more with Wicks. So both teams are going to play into the opposing defense's strengths, which is why I think it's going to be a lower scoring game than the experts predict. I'm going to go with Midland. Okay. And I, I just, I want to, my heart's telling me Camu because we, I've seen how the running games and all these simulations have been working. And, you know, it's just really effective, especially the misdirection and the option type of runs. Uh, so I, I want to go with Camu, but I got to go with Midland because, I mean, it's CJ Wicks, it's Stokes King, it's Claudio Keller. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll take Camu. I, I think they're going to bounce back, get the win. So tell us what you guys think. Are you excited? about Brothers Bowl 4. I don't know if this should be Brothers Bowl 4 or Brothers Bowl 1. Let's just True. Keep... Yeah, because these other the other ones aren't going to be shown. Yeah. Um, but everybody knows that have been here for a while. They, they know. They know the history. But <clears throat> this is Brothers Bowl number 1. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, it's not going to go well for me. I'll just tell you that straight up. I mean, it's... Uh... Don't count yourself out, yeah. man. I mean, sometimes we're a week ahead, but like we're, we're literally we're we're not ahead. This game has not been played yet as of this recording. I don't know what's going to happen, but I have got a bad feeling. I don't know either. I got a bad feeling. I always have a bad feeling when I have to play you. It's a Thursday night game. This <laughs> game is probably on ESPN. Ooh, yeah, good point, good point, good point. Yeah. Who are the other games that we're going to show since not obviously we've knocked out you and me in one well, game? Well, this game, I'm... I think we're going to do, uh, this might be the debut of the lightning round game. Like I think feature games, we're going to do McAllen, ACU, Little Rock, Shreveport. Camu Midland is going to be our lightning, uh, highlight game. Okay. I, I can't pass this up. No, that's too that's good. A, it's a cool matchup. There's a lot on the line for both of these teams. And you know, we haven't seen Camu in a while. I want to check in with them. Same for Shreveport. We have not seen Shreveport since week two. So we need to, Catch up on that story. Four and one. That's a big deal. So wrap it up. Who are we who are we uh, showing again? McCallum ACU. Yep. Little Rock Streetport. We're gonna have a lightning highlights reel with Camu and Midland. Game. Okay. All right. Cool. So you guys get four games. Well, maybe three and a half. But yeah. Regardless, it's still gonna be a good week. Good for week eight. We'll see you guys on Saturday. Make sure you leave a like if you like this thing, and if you're excited about Brothers Bowl number <clears throat> number one. And the rest of week eight action. So we'll see you guys then. If you like it, love it, and you want more of it, you're new to the channel, you know what you got to do. Hit that little red button for a subscribe or my logo in the bottom right hand corner. And we'll see you then. Talk to you guys later. As always, peace.